Absolutely no one was buying this graphics card during the GPU shortage because the value was just so bad on this card. Obviously every card was overpriced during the shortage, but this one was really bad. Fast forward a couple of months to where we're at now, and this card is honestly some of the best value that you can get, and a lot of people are sleeping on it here in mid-2022. Let's check this thing out. All right, so the card we're looking at today is the RX 6800 XT, specifically this Gigabyte Gaming OC model, and before clicking off this video because your brain is programmed to think that this is a $1,000 graphics card, hold up a minute because it's actually pretty fairly priced these days, and it's super valuable for anyone looking to get a higher resolution gaming experience for not a ton of money. This model specifically has 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 VRAM, and since it's made by Gigabyte, you know it's already rocking their signature WinForce 3X cooling system. And during our stress testing, where the card was pegged to 100% utilization, the temperatures always remain nice and chilly. But now before we talk super deep on why the 6800 XT is a really underrated graphics card, let's first talk about the testing rig that we built for today's benchmarks, and we gotta give a huge shout out to both Gigabyte and AMD for sending us almost all of these parts. Real quickly, I just wanted to remind you guys that today's build was indeed activated with Windows like all my other PC builds and flips, and I personally use GVG Mall, which is also the sponsor of today's video. To celebrate their mid-year promotion for 2022, they're actually bumping up our normal 18% off discount up to 25% off, and that gets Windows keys and everything else down to some really affordable prices. They also have other great products on other software like Office 2021, and even some game keys from platforms like Steam, Origin, and Uplay, and they even have console stuff too like PSN and Xbox prepaid cards as well. Well, activating that Windows 10 on your computer is super simple to do. The entire process of buying and activating takes like five minutes total. So make sure you click that first link down in the description and don't forget to use discount code ZTT18 for 25% off. Gigabyte sent out all of these parts that we're looking at now for testing, and this is seriously a solid care package and perfect for our build today. I'm honestly kind of jealous that this PC won't be mine personally, because I'll be selling this over on the ZaxTechDurf.com website for our July 1st launch, by the way. But yeah, for our CPU, this here is the Ryzen 7 5700X, which is rocking eight cores and 16 threads that can boost up to 4.6 gigahertz. But do be aware that if you're looking for an ultimate banger 1440p or 4K gaming machine, I would, however, recommend getting the 5800X 3D, which is one of the best gaming CPUs on the entire planet right now. The main reason why I didn't is because it's not going to really affect the point that I'm trying to make in this video about the 6800 XT specifically, but also because it's almost double the price of the 5700X, it's an almost $500 CPU. The motherboard our 5700X is plugged into, however, is much more affordable, and this here is the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Pro. This latest B550 platform of course supports the latest 5000 series CPUs, and also the 3000 series CPUs which is super useful, and it also has the PCIe 4.0 technology on the X16 slot as well as the dual NVMe M.2 slots as well. There's also a 2.5 gigabit LAN port which you know someone like me likes to take advantage of, well at least at home because the internet here in our office is as slow as it gets. Also plugged into our motherboard is the RAM kit, and to make sure we're getting the most performance as possible, Gigabyte hooked us up with the Aorus RGB memory which is a 2x8GB kit clocked at 4400 megahertz, and the games we'll be running on is the Aorus Gen 4 7000 one terabyte SSD. With sequential reads and writes of 7000 over 6850, which is utilizing the PCIe Gen 4 technology, and the 4400 megahertz speed on the RAM, you know this is shaping up to be a solid benchmarking run. Powering our build is the UD750GM power supply, rocking its Japanese capacitors, all the protections that you'll ever need, it's got the fully modular design, and it can also support PCIe Gen 5 graphics cards. And finally, the last part they sent over is the Aorus Waterforce X280, which is a beautiful looking AIO to keep our CPU nice and chilly like I said earlier. The 5700X is definitely no match for this beefy of an AIO, and you know I love the aesthetics of both the RGB fans as well as the customizable LCD display which you can showcase videos and GIFs as well as important information like our CPU temperatures. Here's what the full parts list of the testing rig is looking like, but now let's circle back to why we're originally here talking about the 6800 XT. The main reason why I wanted to talk about the 6800 XT in this video is because it had one of the biggest swings in price from being super overpriced during the GPU shortage to now honestly being a no-brainer for anyone looking to game in 1440p or especially 4K. During the peak of the shortage, the 6800 XT was being sold on average for around $1,600 to $1,700 back in May of last year, and then during the last half of 2021, it was still close to that $1,500 mark. When it launched at its fake AF MSRP of $650, Liar! 
This was essentially tripling the price, so no one was even considering this as a viable option. If you were hunting for a 1440p or 4K gaming graphics card, most people were considering the RTX 3080 back during the shortage, mainly because it goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the 6800 XT, and it was at relatively the same price. However, now that the GPU shortage is over, at least here in the United States, the 6800 XT has quickly dropped to almost MSRP pricing, and although the price of the RTX 3080 has indeed come down as well, the 6800 XT is consistently below it, and it's now at a really attractive price point. For the last month or two, I've been consistently seeing the 6800 XT go on sales around the $650 to $750 price range, and the RTX 3080 remains a bit higher than that at around $800 to $900. I don't think it's really necessary benchmarking these two cards head-to-head -head because nothing has really changed, they both go toe-to-toe -to -toe and they're relatively the same performance. However, when the 6800 XT costs around $700 and the RTX 3080 costs around $850, you gotta take the XT 10 times out of 10. The advantages don't stop at just the price to performance though. With the 6800 XT, you also get Rage Mode, which is a baked in auto overclocking or frequency boosting technology to get even more performance out of the card. The 16 gigabytes of VRAM is way better and getting more and more important compared to the 10 gigabytes on the RTX 3080. And even on the used market, the RX 6800 XT is trending way lower down to the $500 to $650 mark because over the past decade, people continue to sell Nvidia cards more than their AMD counterparts. Now don't just take my word for it on the 1440p and 4K gaming experience, let's run our own benchmarks to see how it's truly performing here in mid 2022. I'll be testing all of our titles in 1440p because 1440p and 144 or 165 hertz is still the sweet spot in my opinion for peak PC gaming performance right now. And just as a hopefully unneeded disclaimer, please don't even consider the 6800 XT if you're still rocking a 1080p monitor. We'll quickly look at just a few of these games and then we'll bust out the big chart with even more numbers. But starting here with a super demanding game like Elden Ring, here are the results that we got in 1440p. Do you remember that this game has a 60 FPS cap, which is really dumb in my opinion, but regardless, this game still looked amazing with our 6800 XT. And then for the last individual title, we have Apex Legends. And honestly, the only reason I included this one is because I wanted to let our benchmarking god Sam do a little bit of headshotting work with some higher end hardware. Usually he's trying to do these montages with integrated graphics like a 5600G. So do your thing, Sam, but this time in 1440p. <laughs> Hopefully you all enjoyed that quick one, but here's a chart with 10 more titles benchmarked with our 5700X and RX 6800 XT. I don't think I need to emphasize this anymore. This is an absolute beast of a gaming setup and definitely something that I'd recommend if you're looking for a GPU around this similar price point. Now, before you go, I do wanna talk about a couple of small negatives about this graphics card if you're thinking about making the purchase. First up, the 6800 XT consumes a ton of power and you'll need a beefy tier A or tier B 700 or 750 watt unit and that will definitely add a fair bit of money to your total build price. Please don't cheap out on the power supply with a high-end system like this. And then the other potential downfall is that the 6800 XT is a big graphics card, so make sure you plan accordingly. It's not particularly super long, so it should fit in most normal size cases, but it's a pretty hefty and beefy unit, and it would be a good idea to get a GPU sag bracket underneath it. Other than that though, I would highly recommend the RX 6800 XT with today's market pricing, and it's an amazing option for anyone trying to jump up from the scrub 1080p gaming experience. Big thanks again to Gigabyte and AMD for hooking us up with the components that we needed for our testing today. And if you are in the market for a graphics card, but maybe a little bit cheaper of one, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.